Thank you, Lisa, for the introduction. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. My name is Varun, and I'm from the cohort three of the Data School. And today I'll be talking about how you can enhance your Tableau Wiz using Figma. So let's look at the agenda for today. So first, we'll start with why you want to use Figma with Tableau, and what is uh, some of the common practice uh, that is used when using Figma with Tableau. And we'll look at an overview of how Figma works, and then we'll jump into uh, replicating an existing dashboard that's uh, created in the community. And finally, I'll take uh, any questions that you guys have. So for those who haven't already used Figma or Google what Figma is before, Figma is a UI tool. Um, and why do you want to use Figma with Tableau? Because with Figma, you can use some of the aspects that are not natively available with Tableau. And to tell you what, I, what uh, exactly I mean, let's look at some of the dashboards that the people have created in the community using similar or the same UI tool. Let's look at this sales uh, overview dashboard created by Ludovic. As you can see from the green box on the dashboard, and there's a uh, shadow behind it. This was created using a UI tool. Let's look at another uh, dashboard. This was created by Praveen, and you can see that uh, there's a chart and there's a background image behind it. Finally, look, let's look at another example. This was created by David. Um, and as you can see, uh, all these dashboards look really great. And uh, note that maybe not all of them were using uh, Figma, but they were using some or the other UI tool. Now, looking uh, um, back to the agenda, the common practice that people follow when using a UI tool is they create the design in the UI tool and export it as an image onto Tableau, where they use the image as a background and create charts and use them as floating objects to coherently work with Tableau and a UI. So that's the common uh, theme that is followed when using a UI software. Now let's look at an overview of how Figma works. When you create an account with Figma and open a new draft, this is the same window that you'd be looking at. Now before uh, we look at the overview, um, in, in today's session we'll not uh, be deep diving into all the functionalities Figma has to offer, but we'll look at some of the key options available. So to start off, we'd notice that um, by default, the move option is selected. What we really want is the frame to be selected. Now, when I do that, you'd notice that there are uh, some preset options that are available on the right side for me to choose from. But uh, what, what I really want is a custom size layout. So I select, excuse me, and then drag uh, and release. Uh, by choosing the left click to get to create a frame on the canvas. Um, so what is a frame uh, on Figma? So frame in Tableau terms is uh, similar to a dashboard where you can drop multiple objects and then collectively export them together. So the other option I have in the frame drop down is the slice, which is used to export a certain section of the frame, which we'll not be looking at today. We'll look at the next option we have, which is the objects drop down. So I can select different shapes from here. Let me select rectangle first. I'll, I'll uh, drop the rectangle the same way I did uh, with the frame. I'll left click, drag and release. Uh, let me select another object as well. 
And as you can see, as I'm dragging and dropping objects, um, there is some indication to the left of the screen that's, that there are objects in the frame. And there are also options to the right, which are specific to the object. So let's select this object and change the dimensions from the right side of the screen. Let's say we select this PR and give it an even dimension of 250 by 250 to make it a circle. Um, now, the other options that we have here are the fill option where we can select a color for each of the objects. Note that we can also drop in any hex code or any RGB codes that we have to change the colors. I'm gonna leave it at that and go to the next option, which is the stroke. The stroke basically gives you a border for the object selected. So let me add that. Can't see it clearly because uh, the size of the stroke is just one at the moment. Let me increase it to five. So the other options that we see uh, on the stroke menu is I can put the stroke, the border inside, outside or at the center. So as you can see, we have a couple of options here. One is to hide and unhide the selection or the stroke in this case or completely delete it by selecting the minus sign. I'm going to delete it uh, now and move on to the next option. This is the FX option. So choosing an effect will uh, by default give you a drop shadow, a shadow option. So to clearly see the shadow, let's change the axis of it to the left side of the object and give it a blur of three. Now that you can see a shadow appear behind the object. I'm going to same way I'm going to delete this option and the final option that we see here is the export option and if you currently click export rectangle it will it'll only export the ob the object that we selected but rather what we usually do is select the frame and export all the uh, contents in the frame together collectively so Looking at the options from the top left, the other options we have is a pen and a pencil. Pen can be used to jot points and create a custom shape. I'm just left clicking right now to create this custom shape. And pencil is a freehand version of the pen uh, option. So you can draw custom shapes by freehand. I really don't want these two options right now. So I'm gonna delete them just by selecting and clicking delete on the keyboard. Next option we have is the text, which obviously refers to the text. So we can change the font size and uh, the, the font itself from the right hand side. So I change the font and I can change the font size to be bigger by selecting the text object there you go so uh, the next option that we have on the top right is the hand tool to basically move the frame uh, on the canvas and the other option we have is the show and uh, hide comments which will not look in the video so going back to the uh, rectangle we can notice that there are some other options we have in the center. One is the edit object, one is the create component and use mask. We'll not dig into uh, these or maybe we'll just look into edit object. So let's click on edit object, hover over the uh, object and then select and drag the object to change the shape of the object. I'm just gonna Click on done and control C to get, go back to the rectangle. Um, so those are some of the basic functions. Uh, 
something that you should notice is um, uh, Figma gives you some visual cues as you hover on the objects. For example, if you hover on the corner, it gives you a radius option. When I select and drag it, you see that the corners are getting rounded. Similarly, with the uh, ellipse object, if I hover, I get an option called arc. When I move it up and down, I can create a pie chart or a pie object. And when I go to the center and select the center and click uh, and drag it, I can create a donut shape. So look out for some of the visual cues and explore some of the other options that Figma has to offer. Uh, so next on agenda is uh, an exercise uh, where we'll try and replicate an existing dashboard in the community to get a better understanding of how Figma works. So the whiz that we're going to try and replicate is uh, created by Tone Hong, which is on the Premier League for the season 1920. So the reason why I chose this whiz it is because it's not too overly complicated in terms of the UI design and fits well with the time, time constraint that we have today. So when I say we'll try and replicate, it's we're not going to uh, recreate it word to word, but uh, we're going to uh, try and create a very similar looking dashboard. So this whole process of creating the design on Figma and then exporting it onto Tableau can be a very iterative process. Sometimes you have to go back and forth to see uh, how the design fits well with uh, the charts that you've created. So let's uh, open a new canvas, drop in the frame. And I want to give this frame a size of 1500 by 800. So what I noticed from the design is that there's a background image and there are a couple of rectangles and a couple of logos uh, which are layered. So I'm going to start off with bringing a background image. I'm going to get a background image that I've already downloaded onto my local drive. I'm going to select the image and drop it onto the frame that we just created. What I'm going to do is extend the image so it fits well with how I want it to be. And I don't want the image to be looking as it is, but, uh, but give it some opacity. So I'm going to reduce the opacity to say 30%. And I don't want this uh, white tint and I, I want, rather I want a dark tint. So I'm going to change the color of the frame to black. Next step is I'm going to get a couple of rectangles going to get the rectangle, change the color of this rectangle to a dark red and give the border some uh, curve. That fits okay. Going to get another rectangle and do the same thing. Going to change the color first. and then give the borders or the edges some uh, curve. And to this, I also want to add a shadow uh, effect. So I want the shadow effect to appear on the left. So I'm going to give it a, a negative X of say 15. And the next step is to get a text object. I'm going to type in Premier League. And I want the text to be at an angle of 90. And I want this color to fade in with the background color. So I'm going to change the color of the font. The next uh, object that we're going to get onto the dashboard are the logos. I'm going to get the Premier League logo first. And one thing that you'd observe is as I'm dropping in or getting new objects onto the frame, 
they all appear to the left and the order in which they appear to the left are, is the same order they are lay, layered on the frame as well. So I want the font to stand uh, before this uh, image. So I'm going to drop the image after the font and then reduce the opacity of this image to say 20%. The next image I'm going to get is the Liverpool logo and what I want to change is I want it to be a fit rather than fill so I, s I always see the entire logo. So I think I'm happy with the way the frame is looking so far and I think it's ready for us to export it onto Tableau. I'm going to select on frame on the left, go to export and click on export frame. So I'm going to uh, grab this image, place it onto the folder that I want it to be on and open the uh, Tableau dashboard where I've already built in a chart uh, that we need for this dashboard. I'm going to change the size of the uh, dashboard to be the same uh, as it is on the frame that we've created which is 1500 by 800 and I'm gonna drop in an image so I'm gonna select the image that we just created which is named frame one and I want to get rid of the uh, padding that is that is uh, there on the dashboard. So I'm going to select the containers and and I'm going to get rid of the padding. What I'm going to next do is bring in the chart that I've already created and I'm going to get rid of the legend for the chart and expand the chart. So I'm quite happy with the way it's looking and what we wanted to achieve. So this is how uh, you can go ahead with creating a design on Figma and get it onto uh, Tableau. So what we've looked at uh, today is we've looked at why we wanted to use uh, Figma and what what is some of the common practice. We've looked at you know, an overview of how Figma works and we've uh, tried and replicated a dashboard uh, in the community. So that's all from me today and I'll be taking in any questions that you guys have. Thank you for tuning in.